everybody. It's Christy here at My Artful Adventures. And uh, today we're going to paint a ceramic truck and tree. And, no, oh, I didn't even bring the other, the finished one over. Sorry. That, <laughs> that's how I roll. Uh, anyway, I hope you got a chance to see it in the other, um, the other pictures that I had up online. So they're very easy. You can get your own. They're a lot of fun to paint. And, um, you know, I just found out recently that you don't have to fire fire them again to be able to use a, a ceramic. So um, when you fire clay once, it's called bisque. And I mean, it's already been fired. So you really don't have to do it again um, unless you want to use special ceramic glazes and get that really, you know, beautiful look and the shiny glossy uh, finish to it. But you can actually get a, a nice finish, finish, a nice glossy finish to things just by, um, you know, using, you can use like glossy Mod Podge. You can use um, a spray polyurethane. Um, there's several ways that you can, you know, get a, a nice finish. Um, and depending on what you're doing, you might not even want to, you know, get that glossy finish on yours. So anyway, I hope that... Um, I hope that you will enjoy making one of these yourself. Um, there is a link. There should be a link in here um, on the description. If you can't see that, I can get to that. As soon as we're finished here, I'll go ahead and link it again. You can find that at my website. It's myartfuladventures.com. And look under classes and events. And there's a link. Uh, you'll, you'll be able to follow that post and get to the truck and tree. We also have a gingerbread house and Christmas trees. So today at 11 right now I'm doing the truck and tree and then um, next we're going to be doing the gingerbread house. I do have the gingerbread house here. So we're going to do the gingerbread house at 3 o'clock and I'll paint one of those for you. Again those are real easy to paint. You know, I did not get the, I think, you know, the best thing would probably be to glue the little lights in. They're not lights. The light goes in here at the bottom. And these are just little, you know, colored things. And so they go in holes. And so you can see them. And then, and then I did this Christmas tree the other day, this gold one. It's got kind of a pearl finish on the bottom and it's kind of gold and it doesn't have a glossy finish either it looks really kind of shiny in this light and a lot of times if you use something that's kind of a um a metallic finish you really don't need a lot of gloss on it unless you want to because it really kind of gives it that uh that shiny effect as it is so i'm going to do another tree this evening a bigger tree um this is an 11 inch tree and the one i'm going to do and it's kind of more straight and the one i'm going to do uh, later. I'll probably do it this evening. So I'll post a time on that. I wasn't sure if after doing two of these, if I'd want to continue and do another, you know, a third thing online too. But we're going to do that um, either, you know, tonight or tomorrow. And if I do that tonight, it's probably going to be, I'll probably do it at, well, let's just plan. Let's say eight o'clock tonight and uh, central time. And so I'll do the tree. And it's gonna, it's a 13 inch. And what I was gonna say is, is that has a different shape and the, the branches look kind of the tips kind of tip out a little bit farther. And um, it, it has a lot of people prefer that. But the links to all of those things are in that, um, that post that you'll find. The link in the, uh, the description of this video is just for the, uh, the truck and the tree. So, um, with that, let's let's just go ahead and get started. So, we really don't need a lot here. Um, I'm just using basic acrylic craft paints, and that's what we're going to use. And a few brushes. Mostly the, the brush I'm gonna get started with is just a cheap, they call these a chip brush, and we'll cover a lot of, you know, space pretty fast with this brush. And you're gonna be surprised, I bet, what we're gonna do first. We're just going to cover it all with black, the whole thing, just kind of a watered down black. And we'll take a little bit of this paint. Um, <clears throat> and before I get started, I do want to tear off a couple of paper towels. I am messy. I, I'm evidently messy 
in most things in my life. Um, I, I just need some cleanup stuff. Oh, and another good thing to have when you're doing painting, which I didn't grab, is like, um, like baby wipes. They can be your friend as well. So we're just going to get some water here. And got that on the floor. Okay, so I kind of moved this area into a place that isn't my craft room. And I've got laminate floor in here. And so I don't really, I got to be careful about getting water, you know, down there. So we're just going to get this really wet. And actually, I find it kind of easy to go ahead and and put some water just on all of it. Just kind of give it a, a coat like this and it kind of helps um, move some of the paint around a little bit. Not a whole lot. You don't have to do a whole bunch. And I've already used this cheap brush enough. I've got some of my bristles starting to come out. So just pick those up. You don't want to get those painted in. So I hope that you can uh, I hope you can pick one up and I know you can buy and I'm just gonna say this now I know that some of the places right now I've been at some of the hobby stores the big box stores and I've seen a lot of some of these things coming in that are already done and if that's what you want to do that's fine if you don't want to paint one of these I just wanted to show you how how easy it is to make one and you know, when you do one yourself, you've got it, and it's kind of, um, you know, you'll you'll always have it, and you can pull it out year to year, and it's kind of nice to make something yourself. And I will say they also have some of these that are ready to paint, and, you know, if that's what you want, that's fine. Um, they are not quite as good a quality as what these pieces are. And these pieces that I'm doing, uh, the company is here in the United States, and it's an American-owned company, and they are run by Americans. These things actually come in. They're, these are made from China, in China, and shipped over, and... Um, I know a lot of people, you know, are kind of against that, but the truth is ceramics are nasty to make. And, uh, you know, they, they aren't good to breathe in the process that, you know, that you use is my understanding. And um, I don't think that we could probably get anything affordable made here in the United States that would be in the, the quantity of this. The quantity that you know you would want to make and don't wait too long because I tell you what this year manufacturing has really taken a hit on getting the you know on, on what they've got available you know a lot of manufacturing had to shut down and they were totally shut down and it really affected what they were making because that is prime time for making a lot of what is, ends up being shipped over here to the United States for our holiday time. Now you want to kind of get down in here. This is just, you know, real watered down. You want to kind of get down in some of the holes, make sure you've got some color going into the holes and then it's not all just white and you won't have to spend as much time trying to do anything with that. And let's see, you know, I mentioned to my husband that it seems weird kind of just talking to myself because even if there's comments that come in, I mean, it's still not anybody to talk to. And you know what he told me? He said, well, you should be used to that because when you talk to me, you're just talking to yourself. Anyway, he's, he's a big kidder. He didn't, he wasn't being ugly. He thought he was being funny. I just laughed. I've gotten where something I say to him all the time is he'll ask me something. I'll tell him. Then he'll ask me again some other day. Maybe it's another day. And um, and so I tell him, I go, do you ever listen to me? He'll just laugh. We just laugh about it. And honestly, sometimes it concerns me. 
Not that he's listening, but the fact that he doesn't remember it. Which, you know, you get to a certain age and there's only so much uh, you've got room for in the memory bank. But just make sure you're getting all of this. And this looks kind of funky all black, doesn't it? Oh, just the whole tr The truck is kind of cute like that. You wouldn't have to do much with the truck. I'm going to do another turquoise one. I just really like that. You know what? I, I think one of the reasons that I really like this little old-fashioned truck shape, we used to have one when I was a kid, and my dad was very, he was very ingenious, and he was always dreaming up something to do. And he took his little truck like this, and he turned it into a dump truck. And we lived out in a rural area and, you know, on a little hobby farm. And so, you know, you just don't have the amount of trash and a lot of other stuff. And we had built, he would built our, our place we lived. And so, you know, as you, you just end up with way more stuff. And, uh, you know, back then the, the trash company wasn't, they didn't really pick up as much as, you know, you can call for a special pickup anymore and have, you know, a lot of things taken away. And so, you know, he didn't really, he wasn't really into doing that. And so he, he made this little truck into a dump truck. And I remember going to the dump with him and people are over there just working and working to empty out, you know, their trucks or whatever they've driven over to the dump site. And they're, you know, shoveling out stuff or throwing it out. And he'd get out of his truck and he would just, you know, push his button in there and, you know, the whole back end of the truck would come up and people would look at you. You know, they were jealous. They were still standing there trying to heave stuff out, you know, manually. And we're over there and with a touch of a button, he's got his, uh, his pickup emptying. So that was always fun. And then at some point, I think he ended up giving, I don't know why he ever got rid of it, but he ended up giving it to, or selling it or whatever, I think to one of my cousins. And then I don't know, I, you know, and I, I wish so much that there was a picture of it. I've never even seen a picture that was taken, but you know, it wasn't like now we take pictures of everything. You just didn't, you know, you had the, the picture of your, you know, the holidays and maybe you wouldn't even take that many pictures. You know, you'd get a roll of 12 on your film, maybe 24 and, um, you know, you would just take, take very few pictures. And even at that, you know, maybe if it was a holiday in the end, you'd get everybody all together and take one picture. Okay, now I'm going to lay this down. I didn't even think before. I should have just done the bottom when I had it standing up. But I'm just going to go ahead and do this and kind of seal some of this. And give it a little color on the bottom. Another thing that's kind of fun when you're, when you're done, you can write your name and the date on here. And so if you've had the kids, you know, maybe you've had somebody else in your family, kids or something help you too, and you can have everybody write their names and put the date on it. Sometimes it's funny to go back and, and you just can't believe that much time has gone by from when you had, uh, you know, painted something. Anything we do this year, we are always going to remember this year, I'm pretty sure. What do you think? Okay, I'm almost finished here. I just put on some hand lotion a few minutes ago, and I, I, I'm kind of, I was kind of concerned about getting it on here and maybe getting some oils on my little truck and making it harder to deal with so that the paint wouldn't uh, stay on quite as well. Okay, I think we're good. So I've got all of that done. And I'm gonna rinse this out. You know, I didn't even notice before. 
I didn't do a lot of detailing on my other one when I was finished and I was looking at it this morning and I thought, you know, it would be kind of fun to go back and, and do a little bit more detail work around the windshield and the windows. And I see now that this has, let me see if I can hold it up and show you. Grab it and that whole, let me see if you can see it. Where is it? Look at the little windshield wipers on the window. I didn't even notice it had it on there. That'd be fun to just put a little streak. I've got some silver that I'm gonna to use too. That'd be fun to kind of just put a little dab of silver. By the time I finished that one the other day though, I'd had way too much coffee and boy, I was kind of jittery and it was hard to do some of that. Okay, now then, Let's go ahead and do our tree because then anything that we get on the truck will be able to cover up with the uh, on the on the truck when we paint it. So I'm gonna just go ahead and use some green. And by the way, if you want to go ahead, oh hang on, <coughs> if you want to go ahead and get one and paint yourself, this will always be on here, and you can come back and. You know, if you had any questions about what we had done here, you can come back and and uh, just use this as a reminder. I think I'm going to do a little bit of two colors of green. One's just a little bit darker than the other. I'm not sure that one's dark enough. It matters. And let's see. Let's use this brush. So this is like about, I don't know, it doesn't look like it's quite one inch wide. So I'm just going to just go in here. Actually, I think I'll kind of flip this and kind of try to do the underside first. It'll be a little bit easier. This is, oh, I like this better than the one I did the other day. The one I did the other day is kind of dark. It's a much darker green. You know, and I am absolutely no expert on trying to do ceramics or paint or like do all the little uh, detail work or what have you. So this should show you that if I can jump in here and do it, so can you. You know, I'm going to get one that's just a tiny bit darker. Hang on just a second. Okay, I've got one a little bit darker. Oh, I'm sure I don't need that much. Not at all. So I want to know, have you guys done any any kind of um, ceramic painting yourself? Have you gone somewhere and done it where you've fired it and, you know, you've, you've worked on it and made something gorgeous? So be sure and let me know. And even if you're not here live, if you'll post some things in the comments, then I'll be able to see them and uh, I can look back. And, and if you have any questions, be sure and put them in the comments and I will answer you later because I'll get a notification. Okay. So, just going to go in with this darker color kind of on the bottoms. Although with having painted the the base black it's pretty dark already. And they don't stick out a lot. I've got way too much paint squirted out here. I'll never need all of that. But, you know, that's one thing about craft paint. It's just not all that expensive. And finally, they're finally getting some paint back into the stores. I know one of the, uh, I know DecoArt, this Americana is made by DecoArt, 
And I know that on their website, they talk about they had to shut down their uh, manufacturing for, I think it said something like 50 days. That's a long time in manufacturing. And I know that they've really been kind of, uh, you know, doing the, the best that they can to get their inventory back up. And just now, actually I was by, I was over at Walmart and I went by just to see if it looked like they were filling in any of their uh, paint supplies because I'd been over at Joann's and also um, Michael's and Hobby Lobby. I, I tell you what, I live in, in an absolute perfect place. I have got one of each of those stores. The Hobby Lobby moved uh, this summer, I think like around June or sometime. And they moved, and they are just within shouting distance of each other. And uh, there's a, a mall that is over there, and then all three of these uh, big craft stores. So you don't even have to... It's kind of bad, actually. You, have, you know, a lot of times... I, I try not to go that often, but, you know, if you need something, then if you don't find it at one, you can kind of go back and check the others. But it sure can be time-consuming trying to get to all three. But anyway, I had stopped by, and I knew what the inventory was still like at uh, at Hobby Lobby and Michaels and Joann's. And, you know, they're starting to get a few more. Uh, still, it, it's not enough to hardly make a difference with some of the brands. Um, some of the brands have more than others. And so... I just happened to be walking by at Walmart and where they had their paint. Oops, I missed a whole spot. There's a whole part of this tree I didn't get. So when I had gone over there though, I just happened to be close to the area where they keep the the, they're, you know, a little bit of crafting supplies at Walmart, and I looked over there, and I couldn't believe they just about had all of their paints filled in over there, and they had, um, I think they, I don't know, they had a, a brand I don't see all the time. And I know that all along, Hobby Lobby has had this one brand of paint, which I never heard of, and I really didn't want to get it because I didn't know if it was any good. And I picked up one, I picked up several colors to try it out simply because they had so much of it. And I thought, well, I guess I, you know, I'll never know if it's any good if I don't give it a try. So I pick up one, and it actually was the brown one that I was going to use the other day when I did the gingerbread house. And on the back of it, I'm looking at it, and it's it says Rust-Oleum on the back of the bottle. And I'm like, oh, that's funny. Rust-Oleum's got like a kind of an ad here on this paint bottle. And I'm like, no, wait, what? And I'm like, this is made by Rust-Oleum. And so I just thought, I got kind of tickled, and I thought all that time I was kind of leery of trying this off-brand paint I never heard of. And then when I'm actually looking at the bottle, I realize it is from a a company that pretty much, I would imagine, if you've ever seen a at least a bottle of spray paint, you're, you know, you have heard of it. <coughs> so... Okay, I think um, I'm just going to hit it a little bit with this. I'm going to take this light green and maybe just kind of dab it a little bit on here. Just kind of a a different little stroke to add a little bit of highlight with that green. So I'm just barely touching my brush in and my butt brush is kind of dry. It's a little bit drier now and I'm just gonna put just a tiny bit of this brighter green on. Not to fill the 
the whole le the the whole branches, but just to give a little wispy amount of this brighter green color. And then I think I'm going to do a turquoise truck or aqua or whatever you want to call it. I'm not sure. Uh, which I've got sitting out here. And I kind of have my dad also had a pickup for a long time. Not one of these real old ones, but we had another pickup. It was probably mm, from the 60s, I would imagine. We had that for a really long time. It's kind of funny how you get, you even, you know, different cards that you may have had in your life, you just kind of, you know, special feelings for some of those things, I think. You see one and it's kind of fun. Okay. All right. I think I'm just going to leave it like that. And you can see, I haven't, I mean, there's places that you can see that there's dark still showing. And oh, I can't, the light on that is kind of hard to see. If there's too much light. Let me turn this light down a little bit. Oh, that's not enough. Maybe more. Oh, I'm sorry. My goodness. I should have had that up. Oh, that's way better. I'm sorry. Okay, I should have looked up there. All right. Now then, let's get to work on some of the rest of the pickup. And I've got two colors here in the bottle. You can see one's a little bit darker than the other one. And I think I'll put some of the darker on first. Ooh, that's really bright. Let's see how that goes. It's kind of watered down a little bit. And that, that black is still coming through there. So the more water that you've used and the, the more you, uh, I think I'm getting it on my wreath. Well, I should have put that wreath on there. Or I should have done the green. I mean, just, you know, it doesn't really have to be perfect. I'm just going to use this to get around this tree. Oh my goodness. Come over the top a little bit. And then we can, oh, if you get it on your window, don't worry about getting it on the windows. And if you're having trouble with it, get a little bit more water. And the water actually helps smooth it out really nice. And then I don't care if any of the black comes through because it just gives it that real 
you know, um, weathered look. Might have to go back with some of my green on my tree. But don't worry about getting it all perfect. Because once you're done with this, you can go back again with your, your black over any of the parts that you need to clean up some. Actually, I'm not going to worry about that because I might go back around that with some of that silver like I was telling you before. And then even though this looks kind of messy, in the end it's kind of cool. Looks kind of weathered and fun. So don't worry about it being too, too messy. And don't worry about, you know, any of these black streaks that are coming through. Like I said, it just gives it that weathered and worn look. to turn that a little so you can see what I'm doing. Oops, I got too watery. And there's some little places on here that are made to kind of for the lights. Yeah, this got too much water. And then I'll go back through, like here's some little indentions here, like for the, uh, or like raised places, they're not indentions, uh, for the light. And I'll do that. I'll go back a little bit later and put that on. And if you wanted to be really, you know, you could do the the grill, put it a little bit more turquoise on the grill, not turquoise, the silver, you do the silver color. And I've got that and I'm going to go back into the, um, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, like the kind of where the hubcaps would be. I'm going to do those in silver and I'm going to put some white around like the tires. We'll give it like some white walls. So 
it doesn't really take too long to do one of these. It would be fun to do with your kids or get some family together and do one of these. Sometimes it's kind of fun to give your kids something and have them paint it and see. Sometimes they'll do stuff that's really cool that you wouldn't have even thought about. Children are very creative. And I often say that it's really too bad that people lose that, that confidence that they're creative as they become adults. And I think a lot of times they have people that, and I think sometimes, and I hope none of you are art teachers and get mad at me, but I tell you what, I think sometimes um, art classes in school, um, I, don't, I don't think that they are the best sometimes for creativity. They try to tell kids that, you know, one way is right and, you know, you need to do it this way and this is the best way. So while they they are like trying to teach um, some of the best ways for drawing and painting, they also are beginning to squelch that confidence that kids often have in what their natural abilities are. And um, so, you know, you take a, a kid who's got some desire to do that and who they actually are kind of creative and you know, before you know it, they don't want to do it anymore because they've had somebody go out telling them that that wasn't really the right or the best way to do something. So, I don't know, which is kind of sad. I have always enjoyed art and being creative and doing, you know, things on my own and And a lot of times I had art classes and my pieces were rather funky looking <laughs> compared to many of the other outcomes of my fellow students. Now this I'm just going to kind of go back and forth. Some of this is a little darker than others. Oops, I missed this guy. Completely missed some of that. But as you can see, I mean, I'm just kind of hitting this and the top, I'm going to smooth a little bit of that out. Oops, 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 oops. Too much, too much. Too much water. Yikes. <clears throat> and I've got my, my black is really showing through there a little more than I would like. This guy needs a little bit more. Okay. Put some more back on there where it came off without water. Good grief. With more water than I needed. And just kind of, you know, rub it on here. He looks used. Yeah, instead of using another color that's lighter, I think I'm just going to put a little bit more of this on and it really gives it a little bit more, I don't think I really need another color because it almost looks like another color like this just adding more on. 
So, you could though. I think I'll just put it in there on this side. I'm almost afraid to put more on because I don't really want to mess it up. Because I'm kind of look at, liking the way it's looking right now. And if it's a little bit too dry, just get a little bit of water. This part right here got too dry. It's not smoothed out very good. So I'm just going to hit it with the water. There you go. So that'll take a minute to dry. And a lot of times if you're trying to do paint one thing on top of another and you really don't have a lot of time to let it dry or you've got a place that's got too much paint on and it's taking longer to dry than you wanted. If you'll just have a hair dryer handy, that kind of works well. And you can um, just use a blower. Just use it on low heat. Or, you know, some of them just have an air setting and that would be good too. Okay, I actually kind of like it like that. So now I'm going to go in with a smaller little brush and do this wreath. And if I do the wreath now, I thought I had a little flat brush. Just use this. Oh, I see there's a tiny one. Well, good thing I got this brush out. I'll just do this one. I got a little bit in the very center of the wreath that I didn't do. kind of funny to paint something and then just look at all the places that haven't come out very well and you're just going oh that's okay look it looks like I meant it to be like that so let's let's work on this wreath and just get some green on here and Probably gonna try to be a little bit more um, I want it to be a little bit more precise than some of the rest that we've been working on so far so that's why I got out a smaller brush It seems funny kind of working on Christmas things before it's even hit Halloween and the end of October. But like I said, if you want to do something like this, you really need to jump in. Because I know the inventory is not going to be there all that long to do some things like this. So if you want to do it, don't wait too long. Get what you need. You know, when we, I tell you what, it's so funny. We moved from, we lived up in, uh, well, I'm originally from Colorado. And we ended up, after my husband got out of the Navy, we lived there a few years. And then um, he was transferred up uh, to outside Minneapolis with work and we thought that we were going to be there just a short amount of time and we ended up being there I think about 28 years and so when we decided we'd had enough of the cold and we were wanting to leave and by then he was working out of our house and so it really didn't matter pretty much you know where we were that he could you know do his job and <clears throat> so 
we decided that uh, we would leave and then we ended up down in, um, we're down in Texas now and we'd gone back to Colorado for a short time and then we came on down here. And so I was not used to, no, I didn't really know anything about Hobby Lobby. Um, I know there was a Hobby Lobby in a, a place that was outside of Minneapolis, but it wasn't anywhere near. It was many, many miles. And so when we came down here and there was Hobby Lobby, um, you know, it was, it was pretty funny. Um, we went to, well, <laughs> thing, let's just say things did not turn out like we had anticipated. And we ended up, we sold just about everything we had. And we just had, um, we just had a bare minimum of stuff. And I knew we weren't going to have a place for everything. And we had, I'd gotten rid of just about everything that I had for Christmas items. And um, so when we moved and had a house again, and it was going to be Christmas, and I'm like, wow, you know, I don't, I don't have a tree. I don't have any ornaments. I got rid of everything. And, you know, I was, I was choosing people instead of things. And uh, that did not work out. And so, um, you know, I'm like, oh, my goodness, you know, that's going to be so expensive. And I was over, and as soon as Hobby Lobby practically put out all of their stuff for Christmas, it was like half price. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to jump on this. And so, you know, I got stuff that I needed, and you know how anymore they put stuff in, and they'll have like a whole box of stuff that matches and coordinates. And so it made, you know, getting stuff for a tree pretty easy. And... um so we got a, you know, a tree was half price. And although I, I love um, real trees, sometimes they don't do real well with me. And so I wanted to get a, another, um, you know, artificial tree. So we were able to get that. And I tell you, I just can't, you know, and, and now it's so funny because periodically when I'm over at Hobby Lobby, it's like who would pay full price for anything? Because it's like stuff is on sale, like practically half price, like every other week, I think. So, which is okay with me. It just seems to be kind of an odd business model. I don't know why anybody would pay full price. Well, probably if you didn't know that, I guess. But it's so, you know, and it's really interesting because each of the big box stores, you know, the big box craft stores, they all have such, you know, they all have different uh, things that... Like one of them might have more that is, uh, you know, if you're looking for, you know, stuff for painting or whatever, they might have more. Another one has more of something else. So it's like, and that that's one thing. I, I wish that, you know, you, you had some idea. Because I, I never know from one time to the next which one is the one I need to get to for whatever it is I'm looking for. <clears throat> I just hope the first one I go to has what I want. So I'm just going to go back in here and just kind of cleaned up my bowl a little bit. And I think that green is, oh, I think the green is drying up. I'm going to put just a few little red dots on it and the wreath. Ooh, that's really watery. Give it a good shake. Oh, one of the things that I found when I when paint has been so low, um, the inventory, I have found several times I just bought a whole set and used one of the coupons. Um, like Deco Arts had a set of, I don't know, like 12 or I don't know how many were in it. And I just thought, well, that's a handy way to be sure I've got some, you know, paint. So I just got the, you know, it's mostly the, the colors you need. And I mean, you can always mix them. There, I like this. Gives a little bit of pizzazz to my, my wreath on the front. How do you like that? Oh, you can't even see it. Oh my goodness. How do you like that? 
I need to move my work over a little bit. I hope I haven't had that hiding the whole time. Okay, so we've got that done. And now then, I want to, you know, I think I was going to put some white around the the wheels, but that just seems like a lot of work. I'm going to instead, I'm just going to take <clears throat> take this and th it's kind of got this flower shape. So I'm just going to make that like in here for the wheels. Oh, I'm kind of liking that. That's kind of cute. And it's got the little centers. I could go back and put a dot of black. Kind of looks like where you'd have lug nuts. So I'll do that on this one too. What do you like to make for the holidays. Do you create very many things yourself? Do you like to do any wall decor? What do you like to do? I'm going to have another class coming up that's a, a painting. We'll do it on canvas and it's going to be a, a truck like this with a tree in the back. So if you don't want to do a ceramic and you'd like to paint something to have to hang up, we're going to do that. So be sure and watch. I'll have information on that pretty soon, very soon. So you can do that. And all of these classes like this that we're doing virtually, if you can't make it, uh, you know, at, at the time and do it live with us, you know, you always can go back and watch the, the video. So that makes it kind of nice. And I think I have just about figured out a way. A lot of people have been telling me that they would love to have like a kit of stuff, like for whatever we're doing, they would like to have a kit delivered with the, the paint colors or, you know, whatever they need. And I've been working on a way to do that and tried to figure that out to where it would be economical because for canvases, the thing about that that makes it um, not so economical, <coughs> excuse me, is the shipping for like a canvas because shipping is so strange. I mean, it, it's not all about the weight. Part of it is based on the size and because of the size of a canvas, then it, you know, it makes it harder to have a decent price for shipping. This is getting kind of messy. So, um, but I can go back in here with the black and cover up any boo-boos I've made. I find I do that a lot. I go back in to fix the stuff that, you know, wasn't exactly how I wanted it. I don't think having a lot of caffeine is helpful either. Well, it's not good for you anyway, but, you know, we like our coffee. And then on here, I'm going to just give a touch of silver right here. I like that. And I'll do one over here. Oops. And this time I've got some red out. That red is really runny though. I'm going to put red back here. That is really runny. I might have 
to come back and do another coat of that. And you know, when you're doing acrylic paints, if you've got something that um, that you need to do another coat of, don't try and just put a lot of it on thick the first time. It's easier to come back and um, put kind of a thin coat on and then come back. I'm going to squiggle some on here. Come back with it and do um, do another coat. It'll go whoa! It'll go on better. And then I'm going to put a tiny bit of what did I do with my brush? Oh, I'm going to put a little bit of silver, kind of thin it out, and I'm going to put it here. Look for the mirror. On both sides. I have to put this one. I don't want to touch some of the stuff I've got. Okay. There. What do you think? I don't know. I, you know, it's not bad like it is. And I think I'm just going to leave it like that. And, you know, you can, we're, we're almost in an hour right now. But here's what you do. You've got, these come with a light kit. And so they've got these holes in the bottom. You saw that when we were doing the bottom. They've got those. And this light goes in here, just snaps in. The truck it's enough off of the ground because of the wheels that it doesn't have to have a special um, spot for it to come out. And then you just turn your little light on. Oops. On. And there you've got your... I just stuck my finger in that red. Oh my goodness. It comes with the little um, colored things. I have done enough of these. I don't know what goes to what. So I'll show you how, you, how they go in though. And you would probably, when you're ready, when you pick out what colors you want or what you like, you might want to, you know, like take them back out real quick and do, um, stick a little glue in them so they stay in there really good. You know what, I'm just going to put a bunch of yellows in for now. Those show up really good. And how fun is that to just have somewhere holiday decor. Isn't that cute? I think these are adorable. So thanks for watching and I will be back at three o'clock central time today and do the gingerbread house and you're always welcome to come back and you know look at watch any of them. So there we have it. There's our little truck. I hope you enjoyed it. I mean, there's lots of things you could do with it. Oh, and it has light. Oh yeah, look here. It's got headlights. How fun is that? I love the headlights. Oh, oh, oh! First, before we go, I got to tell you this. Okay, so now you could either put in, um, you can, you know, put on your glossy stuff if you want. Um, and this would be the time to do it after everything is dry, before you put your lights in, leave your lights off. Put in, put on your other stuff. And then there's this stuff. It's called Snow Tex. And it's by Deco Art. And I'll tell you, I'll show you what it's like. And the best way that I found to get this on, if you're doing it on the, the tree tip branches or something, you can just put it on with your finger and like rub it on and it works out really well. I had a lot of trouble getting, getting it into the places I wanted to on this little truck because, you know, my, my fat fingers were smearing it everywhere. And so what I finally figured out that I could do, and it's got, it's got a real, um, the texture is kind of, I don't know, it's, it's, well, it's got tech it's a grainy texture and you know so it's kind of cool because it's not just flat so it's got some texture 
And so what I found out was the easiest to do to spread it on places that I wanted was with the end of a, you know, a brush, I started to say toothbrush, the end of a paintbrush. And then I could get it like right along where I wanted. You know, maybe I wanted a little bit on the fender or up along the light or up here, wherever I wanted it, it was easiest to get it on like this. Now, if you're going to put it on like the ends of these, then you could like use a little bit and use your finger. And that works out just fine. But anyway, I just want to tell you about that in case you want to get some of that and, and use. It gives just another, you know, bit of dimension to your your uh, your item that you've done. Wow, I can't believe we we're just right at an hour. Okay, I'm done. Thank you so much. Here, I'll, I'll change. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you'll be back and see the gingerbread house. Um, but anyway, I hope you'll follow me. Um, and I've got lots of fun things in store uh, for for coming up and I hope that they will be things that you enjoy doing too. So, and I'm going to give you, I'm going to do a confession here at the end. Ceramics is not my jam. Um, this, but it's been kind of fun. I found out that we could get these and I just love these little truck and trees and gingerbread houses and stuff. And so I thought I would give it a whirl, you know, you don't have to, but uh, we'll do other fun stuff that I know you like to do. So, Come back another time. Bye-bye. Have a great afternoon.